Okay. Thank you, Gerald, and whoever it was who helped me. That's, that's good. Well, uh, thank you for um, inviting me, and I will quickly talk about um, uh, how uh, engaging with people can ye, uh, lead to new uh, insights and also how it can be a, a people-centered strategy for innovation. That means also social innovation. So quickly, very, uh, where I'm from and uh, how I perceive uh, universal design in this context and also how it can be used as a, a very powerful tool for innovation. So uh, about the Norwegian Design Council, it's, uh, it's um, under the Ministry of Trade and Industry, and uh, this is because we see uh, design as a tool for innovation and value creation within business and industry. And likewise, we also see universal design, or also called design for all, or inclusive design as a tool for innovation, as a people-centered tool for innovation. Uh, in Norway, also in many Scandinavian countries, universal design is very high on the agenda. But in Norway, I think we have t taken a step further. And uh, by uh, introducing the government action plan in 2004, uh, the government has put uh, a lot of em emphasis on, on actions and how to achieve uh, uh, a society uh, inclusively, universally designed, actually by 2025. So this is a second uh, plan, a uh, five-year plan, and there is a new one uh, uh, taking, uh, going into action next year. And this plan is top-down and also uh, bottom-up, involving all levels of society, and, but uh, with sector responsibilities uh, within 16 ministries, and many plans and activities, but mainly focusing on public spaces, buildings, transport, and ICT as the main pillars for where we have to focus the first efforts. And we have come quite, uh, quite far already by the two uh, previous periods. So we will do it by cross-sector collaboration, uh, also in including the local and regional um, municipalities. We are using economic measures, but also legislation. Uh, we have quite an aggressive uh, legislation now uh, promoting universal design, but it's all based on uh, the UN Convention on Human Rights, and we have a strong uh, focus on equality and inclusion from way back since the 50s, actually, um, starting also with uh, women uh, and the equality of women and uh, putting uh, women into the workforce. So we all work. Um, and so uh, what I'm going to talk about is how the Norwegian Design Council is working and promoting inclusive design and, and focusing on a, a people-centered um, design process. And the Innovation for All program is one of the many activities in the Government Action Plan. So we've been, we have government funding to, to do this work. So we work closely with people, with users, academics, educators, designers and business, and of course government uh, at different levels. And we do um, many activities at many different levels. And, um, but for one, is a very important one is a um, real design project with industry and we create guidelines, and we also always disseminate all our foundings. It's all about knowledge sharing, and we also learn a lot from our partners from abroad, from uh, UK, Japan, and the US, and also here in Ireland. We have good relationship now with the Center for Universal Design and Gerald. And um, so we do lectures and workshops and conferences. I would talk a little bit more about that. Um, we have this approach that it's all about people, it's having a, a, a focus on who, who are your customers, who are the users, who are the clients. Of course, it's us and not them. And that means older, younger, teenager, children, persons with impairments. We do have an agent um, um, society. Uh, but also we have uh, cultural diversity, ethnic diversity, economical uh, differences, and so on. And we have to take all these aspects into, into consideration. Uh, this is a, a not very legible um, uh, slide, so just read the, he the headlines. Prejudice and, and pre preconceptions about inclusive design. When I started to work in this area, I, I, ha I received so many arguments and so many misconceptions and wrong ideas, so I, I, I always start with um, um, meeting these um, misconceptions and say, no, universal design is not ugly, is not costly, is not for special groups, and so on. So why inclusive design? Well, it's because we have new legislation, changing context, the, the central powers are changing, 
We have the aging population, multicultural society, simplification, usability, needs and aspirations, work retirement ratio. There are so many reasons why we should put people first when we design new products, environments, and, and, uh, and buildings, and ICT, and whatever. There are, there are the reasons it's not to be questioned. Yesterday, we already talked about putting this in the, in the bigger context, have a holistic approach, and of course it's part of this sustainable uh, notion that um, the universal design social um, aspects is part of sustainability. So um, we, we see that as the part of the social um, aspect, the pillar, and, but it has to be viable and the solutions also need to be um, eco-friendly, so this is how we perceive the positioning of universal design in the bigger context. So uh, one of the uh, outputs from our work since 2004 is uh, what we learned from projects from uh, colleagues and uh, international network. We put all our uh, um, information, all our experience, and the methods that we develop, developed into a book. And this is the book we called Innovating with People. We try to make it um, easy and uh, accessible for everyone who is not a designer and uh, who, can, uh, who doesn't know the specific designer terminology. And we wanted to also make the good cases for business and industry. Why engage in universal design? Why involve users and people into the design process? And, and uh, we have, uh, this book is uh, differentiated into um, uh, different sections. So it's speaking to both business and uh, uh, public sectors, procurement, uh, uh, buyers uh, of solutions, but also designers. And then uh, later in the book, you have tools and, and we are describing a simple process because we want the threshold to be low. We want everyone to engage and get started with this approach and this strategy. It's not so difficult. It's not expensive. It's just to get started. But for those who couldn't get hold of the book, we also did a website where we put the main content into, the book, into a website. And of course, we try to make it accessible so people, visually impaired people can, can read it and, and, and use it too. But it's also interactive. If you want to share some of your good inclusive design cases, please contact us and we will put it on the website. So um, we start this, say, uh, this page with a myth buster, as I said. So why is, is inclusive design is not actually uh, just a, a trendy word or for niche markets and so on. What we've done other things too, and uh, we, we, we organize uh, conferences. Uh, we will organize the next one uh, in, uh, in May in 2014. And this is where we have the great experience with design, 24-hour design challenge. And uh, last year, we also had uh, uh, Mark Dyer uh, being part of that. It's a great way of engaging designers, young designers, and not so young uh, professors uh, into um, um, experiencing um, how inclusive design can focus on people and how it can lead to innovation. Actually, what uh, Mark showed yesterday the result they had was amazing with, with this guy um, with Parkinson's and your solution was the City of Sounds an amazing project, only in 24 hours so this is actually a strategy for innovation so I don't want to go into definitions of innovation but it can be um, uh, also how uh, uh, an application or an organizational form is launched into the uh, into market or put into use so, but how can people drive innovation? Well, we see that in Japan, that looking at uh, who are your customers, answer, answering um, uh, questions like, okay, how can a, a, a person with rheumatism uh, cook um, and get better utensils, like OXO Good Grips is a good example of how profitable this approach can be. But we all know inclusive bathrooms, we all love it. Uh, we, we One hand tap and remote controls, it's like mainstream solutions, but once they were for special people. Uh, Ford Focus is one of the more inclusively designed cars in the last century. But also buildings, this is um, from one of the more inclusively and universally designed um, um, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, housing uh, projects in, in, in South Norway. It was um, based on ha including everyone, also older people, uh, people, uh, families, and, and people in wheelchairs, both outdoor and, and indoor. And m it wasn't much more expensive than other, other um, uh, housing, 
but it was sold out in six hours because it was so well done. And it's a good example of how you can integrate all, uh, people and people with different needs into that. So we work on, on public spaces. Uh, this is an, uh, to the right an award-winning um, uh, uh, public space. Old schools, new schools. Uh, retrofitting is possible and you can make it universally designed when you involve people in the process and you also manage to uh, take care of the more aesthetic aspects. Um, service needs to be uh, inclusively designed. In Norway now, 70 to 80 percent of all employment is within services. So we focus especially on uh, how services can be inclusively and universally designed and not creating new barriers, which we kind of experience today with the touch uh, point um, ticketing machine. <laughs> we were all struggling. I took some photos. I didn't have time to download them, but it was a struggle. So we have to avoid that Tech, uh, technology uh, can uh, create new barriers. Uh, well, this is uh, also an, um, a new train that was um, put in on the tracks last year, and it's all universally designed. And we don't, um, we try to, and, and then this solution also integrated um, uh, the passengers in wheelchairs and so on. People with hear, uh, hearing impairments could hear. So the multimodal um, information system was uh, put into practice. So a little bit about how we see um, this approach. It's where the, the commercial interests actually overlapping uh, the social interest. This is where the area for innovation, this is where we have the potential for innovation. It has to be both sust um, uh, economical, viable, and uh, environmental sustainable. So we have to have a holistic approach. So a little bit about lead users and how people can drive uh, drive the innovation. Well, you have to look at the diversity uh, of people because the average person does not exist. So d don't go only for the center of this, but aim for the edges and include more people. And it will ensure a better solution, but also maybe a smarter and more competitive. So this is how we look at, uh, look at um, involving uh, this variety of people into the design process from the very beginning, uh, mapping their needs and uh, doing various uh, activities. And designers are good at doing this and also how to um, map needs, behavior in, in various ways and analyze and, and be, uh, be inspired to come up with new creative concepts and solutions. So, what we call lead users can be a variety. Um, so to discover visual, audio, tactile, cognition, and mobility ch challenges, but also take into consideration their dreams, aspirations, and emotions. And when we talk about this strategy, uh, Michelle, you talk about uh, how designers should, normally they are what you said. Uh, that is the problem, so that's why they don't know what people need because they have no, how can they imagine what people need when they are so different from themselves? But then again, who are making the decisions? We have to also influence decision makers, um, the, by, the clients of the designer, because I'm afraid designers alone don't have the power. They are not that influential. We have to also focus on, on, on the, the big decision makers here. But apart from the physical, the, the, the solution itself, it's very important to also discover people's aspirations and dreams and, and emotions, and not only their needs. So how do you do that? Well, we talked about, we heard this morning about uh, number crunching, uh, rich data, and so on. And that was very interesting. I think I, I just wanted to add to this uh, discussion that, of course, it's very valuable with all these rich data. But on their own, I don't think they're very valuable. You have to have uh, also um, the people in, insights. You have to understand the people's behavior. How, how can you change people's behavior? Why are they doing this instead of that? And then you have to go into uh, depths with maybe fewer persons and, and go deeper, uh, just as opposed to uh, a big number of statistics. But combined, you will have uh, a, a lot of uh, valid and good information that can inform your decisions in a better way. And this is, I think, a good start for um, new, more innovative uh, solutions that also actually benefit the users, the people. 
So there are, are a good, and, good and bad with, with both, uh, bo both uh, uh, um, ways of gathering data. But I think it's a competence in itself how to treat, how do you treat the data? What are you looking for? And how, how do you analyze and how do you interpret? That's also um, kind of a, a competence in itself. And these designers uh, are, can be quite good at just doing that. So we, we kind of identified eight different uh, activities in how to engage, involve user at every uh, stage of a design process. This is different from Mark's process yesterday, but it's simplified, but it still uh, contains the main, main stages in uh, any, any typical design process. <laughs> but you have to engage and involve user at, at all the stages until from the very beginning to the very end. So I won't go uh, into detail about why, but people, excluded people, the lead users can challenge you in different ways. And of course, we have to make sure that there is a, 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 a balance here between the diversity, but you have to tailor make, every project has to be tailor made uh, um, relevant for the scope of the project. What are you going to um, uh, uh, obtain here? So it's not like there is a one recipe of how to uh, make a, 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 um, a selection of lead users. Anyway, uh, we see that uh, all these different combinations can give rich information and, uh, and input into any design process. Even children can be, uh, give a rich information and inspiration. I don't want to go into what we do here, but we have a ministry who's also focusing a lot on inclusion and, and equality. And um, so we did this innovation award uh, to, uh, to just to, prom to showcase for the general public that actually inclusive design is, uh, is good for everyone at every level, both the society, the business, and the individual. So we did, um, th there were seven winners, and uh, the award winning was a hotel chain that actually uh, put inclusive design principles into the whole process, involving users in, in the, the, from the very beginning to the very end. And uh, it's a very good example for business to look at, but also for people who want to see how, how did they do it. And we made a film and interviewed the hotel owner and so on to, to sh share the knowledge of how people can lead to innovation because this hotel chain is quite innovative and people-centered in their whole strategy. It's their business strategy. That was very quick. I didn't time it, but... Um, but... <laughs>